Hi, my name is Blaze Lamy. My primary interest as an artist is comics. Well, I guess I'm a cartoonist, I guess, and uh, I guess I make zines. I've been making zines for four years now or something, maybe six, and I guess I've been blogging for like a few years, maybe two years now, and just making like limited kind of run zines, like just handing them out to friends or like mailing them, um, doing exchanges. This next image is what's called masturbation, and I feel it was the first kind of mature scene I did. I did this. Uh, I'd broken up with my girlfriend. I had come back home. Uh, I was about to leave for New York, and I don't know. This suddenly just kind of came to me. At the time, I thought it was very truthful, very real. Now I see sort of. I'm a little cynical of it. I think it's sort of meta. I think in a sort of easy way, but. I feel that's kind of where I'm going now in sort of a pop accessible way. It's just images of a male face on the right and a female face on the left throughout the whole thing. Next scene, it was the first one I was really proud of, I think. Uh, it was only 16 pages and I didn't even staple it. I just went to the copier and like made 10 of these and just folded them and handed them out. My creative process was I'd sort of store up all this energy and then it would just I would just let it out like in one night. This zine took me like four hours or something to make and I just made it. Like you know, and went to the copiers right afterwards and that was it. And it was it was wonderful. This next scene, this was sort of like I had a lot of money at the time and so I kind of said like, you know, it, I just went all out and I made this team page cardstock scene with colors and you know a high print run. It's probably the most popular thing I've made. I, I still have mixed feelings about it. I love the cover. Uh, the interior is all kind of watercolor comics in a way that is a little um, I don't identify with now, but I can appreciate. I very much appreciate the objectness of this scene. I'd vlogged all the material beforehand, but then the object is... I don't know, I guess that's what the blog-zine relationship is these days, just for people in general. It's like the zine is the object, and the blog is its own content. I was going to say the zine is the object and the blog is the content, but the blog is its own... I mean, the Internet is its own sort of medium. This scene was another one of those kind of nights. I was living in this room in Brooklyn and I had no furniture in it and I had bare floors and I'd, I think at this point I'd probably recently painted all the walls white. So it was just this like white room, you know, with a blanket on the floor or something. And I just, something was coming up, some convention or something. And I just wanted to make a zine. So I just started drawing with charcoal and a white oil stick, and started drawing myself, drawing on the floor, and just really enjoying the positions I was in while drawing, and sort of interacting with my own body via drawing about it, and drawing about the drawing, and I guess it's pretty narcissistic, but it's narcissistic in this way that's really not trying to hide it at all. This next image is all the pages laid out on the floor. With all my zines, it's all about what rhymes with each other, what what creates flow, and what creates movement and static. and It's just things I'm aware of, I guess, while making all this. This next scene is hand jobs. I don't think many people saw this. I made like five copies of this. I got some access to free photo, uh, color photocopies. And so I just kind of made this pretty quickly. Um, this next image is this zine I made that just, it was one of, it was another one, I don't know, I was kind of getting back into this thing of zines about just, if I gave advice to like a young person making zines, it would just be not to think about it, just to go to the photocopy store with like sketchbooks and like stick around with all the settings. Just like make things and make them double-sided and see what comes out. Um... I was here I was like I was blowing up stuff like large and like you know I still am not that good with a photocopier like 
I got a lot of accidents, and here it was kind of just, when you put pages together, suddenly you create these juxtapositions that you don't anticipate. And it's funny because I, I became so attached to the scene because I was making a lot of, this is just one single copy. I was making a lot of just single copy zines. And this one um, I gave to a cafe, and then I, but then I, I stole it back from the cafe just like a couple of days ago because I was just worried about it. I don't know. It felt like precious to me in this weird way where at the time when I made it, it wasn't precious at all. This one, this is the cover I did to the zine. The, what you see on the center, that's the actual physical cover. And on the back of that is the pattern that you see on the paper behind it. And this was called Wigwam. And I did this at another point when I was at home. I'd just come back from New York. I wasn't sure where I was going to go next. And I put this together. I'd run into some free photocopying um, from an old friend of mine who was still in school. And I had access to the school's um, well-color printers, actually. So I made a whole color printing zine of just drawings. Um, came out really, really beautiful. I thought, this scene is... Um, the smallest scene I've done, uh, just in terms of, it's like, like a piece of paper folded into four, basically. And this is one of the covers, and this is another of the covers. And it basically, it basically followed two people, and they interacted in some sort of obscure manner, and it followed both of them from each perspective on altering pages. This next scene is called Katie Holmes' Death Row. It's a recent zine I made, and it came from the title first, I think, and it was all made with Sharpie. This next shot is of the interior of it. I was thinking I shouldn't use that last image because I was going to make a whole Mary Kate scene, Mary Kate and Ashley, but then I decided, I don't know if I really want to do that. I think I was getting too caught up in the moment, too excited. And this next scene is called uh, Yoko Ono in Hot Day. And this one, I was just so proud of. It's it's only eight pages inside with a cover on the outside, but somehow it's so dense and yet so minimal. The cover is so simple, so cute. It's just like this anonymous, cute like girl inside who could be anyone, and yet it's called Yoko Ono. And there's no reference to anything involving the real Yoko Ono inside. But it's just because this person is called Yoko Ono, it gives this sort of interest. I don't know. But it also gives a sort of cheap kind of kind of meta level, like a very, like, I don't know, something that one could quote-unquote blog about, which is, um, I don't know, I feel like by embracing that, I feel like I've sold out somehow, but I feel okay about that which is funny. I don't know. I feel like if I met myself now, I wouldn't understand myself, but I feel that's okay. <laughs> and this next image is called Sauce Plax, um, and featuring Adrian Tomina. And I guess this goes off on the same thing with Yoko Ono. Also with these people, I'm really interested in... Mm, I, just, I guess just Asian identity on a visual level, relating to people quote, because they look like me, unquote. Um, which you can achieve in comics in a way that you can in other media. This, I made a graphic novel in a short span of time with the sole intention of submitting it to a grant review. Like, I guess it's a zine, but I only made seven copies of it, and it's like 90 pages, and I sent six of them away for a grant proposal. With this graphic novel, I tried to avoid self-expression very consciously and explicitly, trying only to just to create content. And I'm still a little in that kind of mode, and I'm okay with it, and I'm just kind of dealing with it. I'm trying to create things that are pretty now and not beautiful. <laughs>